Hey, good to see you. Welcome to my channel. And today we are going to look at Love Really Hurts Without You Guitar Parts by the great Billy Ocean. What a tune. I think this was a 1975-76 tune, uh, top 10 in the UK, top 40 uh, in the USA. Amazing tune. Five chords. It's really simple. Nothing to it. Having said that, um, although it is a simple guitar part to play, sometimes the simple parts are really difficult to play well. And what I mean by that, there's lots of stabs in this, lots of staccato stuff. Okay, let's get down to it. There's a few parts to it, but they're very simple and they're almost identical, actually. There's the intro riff. That one. Uh, there's the stabs. Okay, so let's look at the intro riff first of all. Oh, it's so easy and so amazing at the same time. It's a really nice groove to it, it sort of bounces along. And I encourage you to bounce along when you play this as well. I always bounce along and, um, and I forget what guitarist it was that once said, try and move your body when you're playing. Don't just stand there and sit there and be all rigid and stuff. A fantastic tune this um, Love Really Hurts Without You. It's so fantastic that sometimes we think, you know, it's, look at, it's on the set list and we think, man, this might not go down quite so well. But like everywhere we play it, everybody loves this tune. It's just one of those tunes which is in everybody's psyche somehow. And they all get up on the dance floor and start booging to it. I mean, any generation, young kids, you know, grandparents, it's amazing. So the whole tune is in F. Standard tuning. And incidentally, the intro riff is played by a keyboard player on the record. I actually play the intro riff on the guitar and then the band join in and play in the harmony bits um, with me and then the whole band kicks in. However, the original is a piano, but let's, let's play the riff anyway. It's quite simple, it's three notes. Bass down here, so third fret here on the D string, an F, a C on the fifth here, and then a, a D on the, on, the fifth, on the fifth string here. Now, you know, when you do fingering here, what are you gonna do? I've noticed because I've played this for so long, I just use two fingers and I use my first finger and my little finger and I switch this first finger over a string. And if you've not gotten into that kind of technique, it's quite a good one because it makes it really economical. So the pattern is So I'll play along here. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we're into the verse pattern. So again, just those three notes, right? And there's a little double one at the end, so it's... And then we're into the uh, the skanky bit, you know, the accented for the verse. If you can, try the fingering I'm using because it's first finger here and fourth finger up here on the fifth. It's really quite useful. It's not such a stretch as using your third here, you know. It just gives me a little bit more control because in using the first finger here and swapping strings, it allows me to mute the first one because I'm not playing it any longer and the flesh sort of just touches it and mutes it. And this fourth one comes off every time here. So what I'm also doing here, I've got some right hand muting on my um, palm here. And that's the, the groove is that F each time, right? That's the bop. Do 
Alright, you want to get that bop. That's like the offbeat sort of vibe. If you don't want to use your first and, and, and uh, fourth finger that way, use your own finger. I've got used to using this just this first finger. It's a good technique. So that's the intro riff out of the way. Okay, so the verse pattern is just uh, a few chords. We've got an F. Um, and I'm playing an F up here. I'm just using the top four strings for all of this verse pattern. Um, you know, and this is the way I play. These voicings work really well for how I play in, in my band. Because we've got a keyboard player. Um, bass player's quite busy. We're all singing. Um, I'm singing backing vocals on this tune. So I don't want it too complex either. I don't know whether you sing, but if you sing in your band and you're playing, you know what it's like. It's kind of a, whoa, you've got to sing a part and play a part. Um, it can be tricky. So I keep it quite simple and I use the top four strings and this is a voicing for an F major. I don't put the root note in, that would be the root note here. F, and I just use those top four. So it's seventh, fifth, sixth, fifth. And quite often I'm not hitting that D string, that fourth, it's almost just the the top three sometimes. And what you're after here with these stabs is really, it's almost, a, it's just a percussive. Dead after, completely dead. Bink, dead, 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 dead. And I, I'm muting it with a combination of lifting my fingers off. As soon as I've hit it, my fingers here are no longer pressing. You're not, you know, it's, you don't hear it, you're not hearing it ring out. It's, think about percussion. I think James Brown once said that um, every member in a band in his band was a percussionist with funk, right? With funk guitar. And it's true for this. Very simple part. Of course, if you've not got a keyboard player in your band, you might have to spice it up a bit and play some more complex rhythms. But, but even so, maybe not because space in, in all mixes and all music is, is, is um, underrated. I like space. So the first one's an F to a C, and that's from that bar chord C. I'm just doing the top four strings. Then a G minor, like this. And that's like a D minor shape. You might be familiar with that sort of shape down here. But it's, it's here. So there's the G. So that's five, seven, eight, six. And then it goes up to a D minor. And that's that shape, but the top four to C. The second time through, it's C, it's F to C, G minor, to B flat major, and then a quick turn around D minor into the chorus. Two, three, four. C. G minor. D minor. C. F. I love it. C. G minor. B flat. Beautiful, right? Now with these stabs, again, it's dead, really dead, really percussive. You're thinking snare, with, with your drummer, you're thinking, right, I'm playing with you, man, because he's on the two and the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, ba, ba. With snare. And it's tempting to play more than that, but I just think it doesn't need it. The whole song is, is it grooves, you know, because the bass grooves, keys are grooving, drums are grooving. That's all it needs, that kind of percussive effect. So that's the verse part, it's really quite simple. Let's go on to the chorus. The chorus is uh, almost the same. Two, three, bar. <laughs> G 
minor, B flat, D minor, C. Lovely, right? So it's pretty much the same thing as the verse. Nothing changes there, just that you're doing the B flat and the turnaround each time, okay? That's the chorus out the way. Um, then you go back to, into this riff. Once through, you're into another verse then, uh, and then another chorus. After the last chorus in F, it goes back into this. To a G, so the whole thing moves up two frets. So you're going from an F to G. Two, three, four. Beautiful. Exactly the same as the intro pattern. chord pattern just down two frets So that, as you notice there, it goes back into that riff at the end. And that's it. And that is it for Billy Ocean. Love really hurts without you guitar parts, the guitar tutorial for it. Uh, I hope you've gained an awful lot out of this. It's really simple, but what I've tried to explain to you is honoring the song. That's the way I always try to approach my guitar playing. You know, it's... um. Very tempting to be really flashy and throw in as many licks as possible and um, overplay. Um, one of the things I've learned, um, particularly with a band that I've been in now for the last six, seven years, it's a kind of a functions band, is that it's all about honouring the song and um, making sure the song grooves or rocks, um, it's full of emotion, has the right content in it. Uh, and sometimes all the guitar parts that are required are really quite simple, like this tune. But it is quite a discipline to play the guitar in a really disciplined manner and honoring the song. It'd be very tempting to put in all sorts of fills in this and overplay it. Um, and we can all be gu guilty of that sometimes. Um, that being said, I don't think these are the same chord voicings that are on the record. I think there might be slightly different chord voicings and there might be the odd little riff in there somewhere, but it's really low in the mix. But I hope that's given you a good idea of what you can do with it in your band and how you can start playing along with it. I will put a link to this backing track uh, in the description. I found this backing track on YouTube. Um, I think it might be a karaoke version or something, but I found that, um, so I'll put a link to it and I've just put it up in my digital audio workstation here, looped parts, so that you can play along with it. I hope that's been beneficial to you. Remember, this track is all about muting. Lots of people call that skank. And I will see you on the next one. Yeah.